What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, before you go, make sure to tap that little subscription button because I'd love to have you stick around. Now today I'm going to work on my back squat. I have not really back squatted in probably about three or four months. Last week was the first week back into squatting and my coach had me doing high bar squats for a um, set of five, he wanted to know my max. And so I figured that out. It was like right around the 175 pound range. Today is gonna be a low back squat day. I need to find my three rep max. So before I get started doing that, I wanted to show you guys just how you can figure out your own back squat, uh, single rep max, uh, triple rep max, even your five rep max. So first things first, we need to talk about squat racks. Right now, I'm going to use the single stand squat rack as what I'm going to use for my, my entire workout. So you'll probably see over here in the corner is a heavy duty squat rack. It has the four bar setup so that way you are able to drop the bar on the rack itself if you don't have a spotter um, and the rig itself will hold it up. I've used this rack in a lot of my videos so you probably know what it looks like or if your gym has something similar. but. It is much, much larger as you can tell. They have these right here as the safety bars. So if you would bail it off your back, the safety bars will actually catch the weight. And so if you're by yourself and you want to use something like this, that the safety bars can catch it, by all means, definitely do that if you only have like steel plates available. I know um, a lot of gyms probably wouldn't appreciate you bailing uh, with steel plates because it's probably going to put holes in their floor and ruin their mats and stuff like that. If you also have a spotter and you want to use something like this, by all means do because this actually will help your spotter as well. Remember guys that a spotter is not supposed to take all of the weight. It's just supposed to be there as a safety precaution. So in case something does happen, they're there to help you not to take all of the weight off of you. So keep that in mind when you have a spotter to not bail like 200 pounds onto them unexpectedly because you're probably going to break something. It's all about you being safe your partner being safe and not damaging your equipment. So that is why today I'm going to use the single. There's actually three of them in this gym. I'm going to use this one over here. And I chose this one because it is the flattest in this area. So I don't know if you can see way in the back where that other squat rack is. I don't know if it focus, but this whole gym goes downhill. So this is the flattest location I can find. So I want to go flat today and, uh, you know, not break an ankle in the process. The next thing to do is to pick the height of the bar. I am low back squatting, so the bar is going to sit right about here. So I will naturally put the bar a little bit lower than if it were to be a high bar squat, which is going to be up here on my traps. So for a low bar squat, this is actually about perfect as it is. So when I go underneath it and I pick it up, I don't know if you can see on the camera, it's sitting right below my shoulders. If I were high bar squatting, I'd probably raise this up just a little bit because it is a little bit on the low side to get underneath it and then have to stand up from the ground, take a step back and then squat again. So you wanna try and make it as convenient and easy to get it off of the rack as possible because remember, this is for the purpose of squatting. It's not supposed to be how much weight can you take off the squat rack and put back. All right, now that you have your squat rack, your bar height and all that set up, next thing to do is to warm up appropriately. I have not stretched yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and stretch and then I'll come back to you in a second. <laughs> Right? 135 plus 20. That's 155. 
So I'm actually going to jump right into 185 because this felt stupid, stupid light. So because this felt so smooth and so light, the reason for me jumping up so much higher instead of working my way up is because my warm up is now complete. Now I'm gonna go into what is called my working set. And so this is where I'm actually going to try and hit those higher numbers, which is going to be then my PR. And remember, this is my three rep max PR. So that means I need to keep the weight moderate, but still very challenging. I'd say if you are doing this on your own and you have no idea where to start, where to stop, what any of your numbers are, definitely start warming up with the bar unless you already know offhand that the bar is more than comfortable for you. If you have numbers already in your head that you've already been doing or been working with, let's say you go into the gym and you can squat 65 pounds for 10 times. You know that that's going to be a breeze for you. So I would start warming up at 65 pounds and then work into a little bit heavier weight. Maybe try 85 pounds and then just keep the reps a little bit lower. I warmed up with three reps because that's what I'm working towards is a three rep max. So because I know my back squat or at least my low back squat can and will be a little bit heavier than what my high bar squat is, I already know that my warm up sets are going to be a little bit on the heavier side. But I already know that 155 is super easy for me. It felt really good, everything was good. So, me jumping into the much heavier weight is because I already know that I'm feeling good. It's going good. So I don't wanna mess up a good thing while it's, while it's working. And I don't want to overexert myself adding five or 10. I want to add heavier weights to really push myself to that challenging level. So for you to get that challenging number, you wanna do something that is uncomfortable for you. By no means don't go get yourself hurt or injure yourself, but you do want to challenge yourself. That is the key here when you are strength lifting or lifting for strength, lifting for bigger muscles, being able to lift heavier weight is to challenge yourself. Because if you know that you can squat 65 pounds for, a, for 10 reps, then, then why aren't you going up in weight? Why aren't you challenging yourself to that next level? Why aren't you working harder to that next level? If you kind of get what I'm saying. Don't go adding five pounds because you know already that you can squat 65 pounds for 10 times. Heck, add 10 pounds on each side, drop the reps. So go to 85 pounds for five reps. See how that feels. If it was super easy, still drop the reps. Go up in weight. Go to your three reps. Again, don't go hurting yourself because if something feels off, don't go pushing yourself just because I said so. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this. I already have a lot of sweat going on right now. I feel good, my squats are going good, so I don't want to stop a good thing while it's going. So keep that in mind also when you are working out. Don't stop and start and stop and start. Keep a good thing rolling because you never know how far you can get if you don't give up. All right, here we go. yourself to push yourself past the point that you don't think you can do anymore and I know I just got done saying don't go up five or ten pounds that's silly we have to look at the big picture here when I said don't go up five or ten pounds 
That was when you were warming up. That was when you knew that you could hit certain numbers with no problem, especially if you're doing high rep. If you're doing high rep at a certain number, you can definitely blow higher weights out of the water by just simply lowering your reps. I am adding exactly five pounds, and I'm going to tell you why. I went up to 205 pounds here, and I know it's hard to see in camera and know how I'm feeling, know how my body's going in the camera, but I just did three reps. First rep felt really good. Second rep felt a little bit off, not anything crazy. I can tell that I am leaning pretty far off to my left side, which is really odd for me because my left side is my weaker side, but for some reason when weights get heavy, I tend to really push off with my left leg, which tells me that probably my left leg is getting stronger and is trying to compensate for something. I don't know what, but it doesn't matter at this point because I'm just going to finish my session and then move on and we'll figure out my issue later. I'm not telling you to do the same. I'm telling you if something feels off, probably should quit. But since this is me and I don't like to quit for anything, we're just going to keep on rolling with it. The third and final rep that I did, I was leaning really far forward, especially with this angle on the camera, you probably can't tell me leaning forward because it's just me here, no spot, no nothing. So I'm the only one adjusting the camera. I was leaning really far forward and when you have 200 pounds on your back and you're doing this number, you have to upright yourself somehow and you either do that by having the strength to lift up or you can either bail forward and hope the weight doesn't take you over with it. I know I can do more. My mind tells me I can do more. My body tells me I can do more, but it's going to really, really push me to do it for three reps. For one rep, I have no doubt in my mind that I could get 210 pounds, which is what this is going to be. Two reps, strong, strong possibility that I could do two reps. The third rep is where it's really gonna get me, and that's where we're really gonna find out if I can really lift this amount of weight. Let's go ahead and throw these on. See if I can do it. See if I, uh, if I have three reps in me. I am completely sweaty. I don't know if you can see that. I got some boob sweat going on from hell. I'm feeling good though still. I'm, I'm tired, but it's like, um, haven't used these muscles in a while, kind of tired. It's not like I can't do anymore. Oh, I need to stop right now type of tired. And so that's how I know I can keep going. Whether or not I can get three reps, let's find out. That is it, we are done. And I am very, very happy with how this squat session went. And I know you guys are probably thinking, well, what about one rep maxes? What about five rep maxes? Secret guys, you do the same thing. There's really not a whole lot of changes. The only difference between hitting like a three or a five rep max compared to like a one rep max, is you want to save your energy for every single rep because you're not pausing, you're not putting the squat bar back on the rack, stopping, breathing, then picking it back up, you are doing them consecutively. And so you wanna have energy to hit not one, not two, but three or even four and five reps. So you wanna make sure that it is challenging, but something that you can do for the longevity of the squat session. If I was going for a one rep max here versus like a three, I'd probably make bigger jumps. I would definitely not add the five. I would go straight to an additional 10 pounds. So I'd put 10 pounds over here and 10 pounds over there. So then that would make this whole bar uh, 225. So I would go all the way up to 225, see if I could get it for a single rep. Have a little faith in yourself that because you have lowered the reps substantially just for that one single rep, that you absolutely can hit it. And it is very scary having a lot of weight on your shoulders, dipping so low and no guarantee to get back up. But that's the great thing about working, working out, working on training, getting stronger, is that you get to see yourself become a whole other person and you get to be stronger than 
what you thought you could be and push yourself to that next level and it really is amazing so trust me guys when I say that it does get easier but you just really gotta work work for it I have the rest of my workout to do it's 1 36 in the morning so I should probably get going if you have not subscribed please do so tap that little button I would greatly greatly appreciate it as well as give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it also if you guys liked this kind of video if you want to see more of them drop it in the comments below I love to hear some of your input as well anyways I will catch you guys next time